Uh, good evening, comrades. Um, I agreed uh, to Brad's request um, to in do this introduction on Palestine, um, thinking it was going to be an update. Uh, but to my horror, when I read the email properly this morning, I found that I'm being asked to talk about the wider geopolitical situation in the Middle East. So um, there are two very useful articles um, uh, that Brad circulated to us. Um, the first one by Oliver Eagleton uh, called Imperial Designs. Um, I just want to pick uh, probably what the, the main idea that I got from that, that article. And he really starts by talking about um, how the um, present uh, conflict is not really uh, fitting in with the US's plans for the Middle East because the US was looking to draw back from its deployments in the Middle East area uh, in order to concentrate its forces more in the pivot to Asia. This started under Obama, which is the military buildup and influence in the Asian Pacific region. Um, and in order to undertake that operation of uh, strengthening the, the, the position in Asia as uh, as opposed to the Middle East, um, they sought to sort of shore up their existing um, alliances with um, Egypt and Saudi Arabia. And under uh, the, the Abraham Accords, um, they brought in the um, United Arab Emirates and Bahrain into this pro-US, pro Israeli anti-Iran axis. Um, so the um, th this is not fitting in with the US's plans. Um, and already um, the current crisis has led to um, uh, deals being um, delayed. Um, the uh, Negev summit meetings, which I've never heard of before, but they, these are an anti-Iranian, anti-Iran alliance that uh, that apparently re remains on hold at the moment, uh, as Arab nations uh, are being hit by mass protests by their um, populaces. And their rulers uh, have been forced to you know, make denouncements of what is happening. Um, so th that's the main idea I got from, or an idea at least I picked up from Oliver Eagleton. Moving on to the second reading by Suleiman Morad, that's called Hezbollah's Next Move. And that focuses in more on, well, that focuses in on um, the, the conflict um, as it's being played out uh, in, on the, around the border between Lebanon and northern Israel. Uh, that Hezbollah's main base is in, in the Lebanon. That's where it started. Um, one useful thing I helped me uh, from reading from this reading is that it uh, is to you know it came to, is the about the relationship between Lebanon based Hezbollah to the Iranian regime because I sort of picked up from through the normal channel normal mass media that sort of Hezbollah is basically a, a, an arm of Iran. Uh, what this article explains is that okay Hezbollah is religiously aligned with the Iranian supreme leader but it is an independent body it takes its own decisions and it is best seen as a partner with Iran rather than um, an auxiliary force to uh, to uh, Iran um, so 
This article discusses the pressures on Hezbollah that impel the level of its military activity along the border with Israel. Um, so what we've seen so far is some uh, rockets, some artillery fire, which has been enough to um, tie down, you know, uh, some of the Israeli military forces in that area. But it's been far from an all-out assault. Uh, and in fact, Hezbollah would probably be um, very worried about the prospect of an all-out war with Israel and the US. Um, I mean, the US has its um, has a fleet uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean, um, and the overwhelming might of the US and and uh, Israel would be far too much for Hezbollah on its own. So um, they probably will take a pragmatic pragmatic approach. Um, of just um, you know this keeping up a low level barrage um, to deflect uh, and divide the um, Israeli forces, uh, but not bring down um, heaven and earth on their heads. Um, but it's difficult to predict how things are going because uh, how things will go because um, you know the the level of genocide that we're seeing in in. Gaza is, you know, could push Hezbollah's support base into a more militant stance. Um, there's similar um, uh, calculations are being also be made by Iran, uh, which had been seeking to mend its fences with the US and Saudi Arabia, and again this is this um this war is um, upsetting those plans uh the, they too would probably not want to be drawn into a regional war um but again um th there's no way of knowing at the moment how things are going to be turning out and a lot of this article and indeed um Oliver Eagleton's art article is around is around speculation about various scenarios that could could happen um i also looked at um so i'm now going to move away from the middle east i said i don't have that in-depth knowledge of it um i'd like to say a few words about um uh, about what's going on in the United States and um, Europe, um, particular Britain. Um, so there's a, an article I looked at on international viewpoint by Dan Labotz, and he reports that in the last seven weeks there's been dozens of um, protests, demonstrations involving tens of thousands of people demanding a ceasefire and to end US support for Israel. Uh, now this is um, there's been lots of activity um, much more than I realised when he, I won't go through it all but there's been um, blocking of streets, there's been blocking of um, the uh, main railway station in New York um, there's been conflict with um, university authorities which have seek to ban um, groups like Justice for Palestine or, or suppress free speech. Um, there's been a hell of a lot going on there. Um, there has been the effect of the, this, these protests has increased the number of members of Congress that are prepared to call for a ceasefire. Uh, it was 14, a disgracefully low number. Uh, and that is uh, at the time of um, Dan the Bots's article that that was published. It had gone up to thirty-one, still disgracefully low number of of representatives supporting a um, you know the rest of them not supporting a ceasefire. He also describes how pressure has been applied on Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren by their 
pro-Palestine supporters and pushing them into a pro-ceasefire position. And uh, also in the United States, there's been religious congregations are being mobilized increasingly into protests. Continuing the theme of um, protests, uh, it, uh, um, yes, I, I looked at an article in the um, British Socialist Work from the British Socialist Workers' Party, which had a sort of a review of, of these worldwide protests. And um, there have been a lot of them and very large protests. Um, in Australia, had uh, 45,000 on the streets of Melbourne, 50,000 on the streets of Sydney. Uh, there'd been mass protests um, in Dusseldorf, Berlin, um very big protests in um in cape town south africa in harare in, in zimbabwe um baghdad protests against the visit by u.s secretary of state anthony blinken um karachi in pakistan uh in belgium in france it, it goes on and on about the um, reviewing briefly these protests um but the um generally speaking the leaders of the arab states have uh have played a pretty are playing a pretty disgraceful role that um there was an a joint arab league and it and organization of islamic cooperation uh, meeting in Saudi Arabia, um, where they um, did condemn Israeli claims to be acting in self-defense. But, um, I'm reading it now, it says, it rejected calls from Algeria, Iran, and Lebanon to disrupt oil supplies to, Liberty, to, to Israel and its allies, as well as severing economic and diplomatic ties ties that Arab League nations have with Israel. Um, moving on to um, Britain. Um, with my background, I do take a bit of an interest in what goes on there. Um, it's been really heartening to see the amount of and size of the protests there, that there was a 800,000 strong march a couple of Saturdays ago. And last Saturday, there were um, 100 demonstrations around the country, again, mobilizing thousands of people. Um, now, I think this is having an effect because uh, um, certainly, uh, you, you probably heard that Home Secretary Suella Bravman was sacked. Um, and, okay, she's been sacked for a number of things, but one of them um, it, it was to try and get the police to ban um, the, uh, the big pro-Palestine march that did take place. Um, and so, yeah, the, the the right wing in Britain are taking some ca casualties from this mobilize from these mobilizations. Um, more importantly, I think than Suella Bravman's um, sacking has been the effect on the British Labour Party. Um, I mean, we've got to remember that Keir Starmer consolidated his position as leader without you know, um, by. Um, playing the uh, Zionism card, um, to arguing that um, Jeremy Corbyn and other leftists were anti-Semitic because of their opposition to Zionism. Uh, so there has been um, a split in the Labour Party with uh, ordinary members resigning in droves, 
uh, local councillors resigning and um, last week um, Labour MPs uh, rebelled against um, Starmer's line in Parliament, this rebelling uh, Starmer refusing to call for a ceasefire. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think that um, This is having a the, the the war in Gaza is having a radicalizing effect um, around the world, um, particularly in Brit in Britain. But um, I don't want to focus solely on that. Um, and I think you know we when, when we consider what the prospects are for us in the period ahead. I think we've got to see, um, or at least recognise that we are seeing a, an upturn in activity by, uh, especially by young people, and all the um, protests that we've been along to recently uh, have been much larger, I think, than we expected. 